Namaskar. This is Tadaranjit Ananda. Welcome to this webinar. Namaskar means I salute that divine essence within you with all the good thoughts of my mind and love of my heart. Today, I'm going to talk about yoga, the benefits and the practice. The first thing is, who practices yoga? I, I practice yoga. So it is that I that practices. Now why? Why do I practice yoga? Usually we do something in order to get something. Human beings, are doing so many activities. Every day we are active. On the weekends, during the weekdays. Now on the weekends, usually most people have more choice. During the weekdays, many people have a work which they kind of feel forced to go and many other things. But on the weekends, they have more choice. They can decide what they want to do. And why we decide to do something or we decide to do something else? So why would we think of doing yoga? We would think that because in our mind, there is the idea that we are going to get something out of it. And this something is usually a good feeling, some happiness some peace. In fact, everything that we do voluntarily, willingly, is to feel some happiness or to feel some peace in our mind. No one will do something knowing that they will get just problems by doing it. It does happen sometime, but that's not really what we want. We are looking for happiness. We are looking for peace in everything we do. So if we are looking into doing yoga, it's because we think that yoga can increase my happiness, can increase my peace, can increase my good feeling. Now the question is, as a human being, how much happiness do I want? And how much peace do I want? This quote from some unknown author, he or she said, humans want the infinite. And it is true. Everything we want, we want just more and more. We are never satisfied with a little. So if happiness is the goal, we want more and more. We want basically infinite happiness. We want to feel it all the time. Not only a few moments, five minutes, one day, 10 years, we want it always continuously. So that means infinite. And the idea of yoga is to give to the human being what human beings really want. And if we think, okay, really, 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 I want just to feel good, to feel peace, to feel happiness all the time. So that is the idea here, how to get it all the time. Now there is this practice. This yoga practice is physical. It helps our physical body. It is mental. It helps our mind and it's spiritual because it takes us to the infinite. The realm of spirituality is related to the infinite. As long as we are in the limited world, we are talking about physical and mental. But when we go to the infinite, that's when we start talking about spirituality. 
Yoga starts with the body. What are the effects of this practice on the body? Will we sleep better? Will we get less anxiety? It also increases our vitality, more alertness. We become able to overcome tiredness quicker. It means we can walk a lot, we get tired, but very soon we recover. We will get also more energy, more resistance. When we do yoga exercises, we recover energy. Suppose we get home in the evening, tired, we just want to lie down. That's a good time to do the exercises. After finishing the exercises, we will feel re-energized. These exercises of yoga are not physical exercises. They work on the internal organs, particularly the endocrine glands. And they balance these glands and the hormonal secretion of these glands. And these hormones have a very deep effect on our mind, on our immune system, on our health in general. The endocrine system can balance the body. And what is health? Health is a balanced state. Physically balanced, mentally balanced, spiritually balanced in all levels of existence. If our body is healthy, but our mind is not, that doesn't help. If our mind is healthy, but our body is not, it also doesn't help. And if our body and mind are healthy, but we don't develop spiritually, we'll be always frustrated because human beings don't like limitations. We want unlimited. Only the spiritual world is unlimited. The mental and physical world have its limitations. Yoga continues with the mind. So what are the effects of yoga on our mind? It helps us to manage stress and to keep the mind calm, to be peaceful. That helps us to learn easier, in an easier way. We can learn easily because we can concentrate. Our mind will not go in all directions. If we read a book and at the same time we are thinking other things, we will not catch much of it. If we are fully concentrated, then we really get the content. Yoga also helps to increase creativity. Creativity is already within us. It's in a deeper level of the mind. If we can awaken that level of the mind through the meditation practice, we'll be able to solve problems in an easier way, with more creativity. And yoga also helps to have a better relationship with others. Sometimes we think that the practice of yoga is an individual practice. It uh, may look like an individual practice, but it helps also with the collectivity. It helps us to connect with other people in a deeper way. And yoga has that spiritual aspect of it. Helps us to grow spiritually, to have an inner sense of fulfillment and a better understanding of life. Putting things in proper perspective. What is important in life? What is not important? Sometimes we are spending a lot of our time with things that are not important. So these priorities, understanding the priorities of life, come when our intuition increases. What is intuition? Intuition is a deeper capacity 
that we have as human beings, which is beyond the intellect. Using intuition, many discoveries were made, many inventions, many theories were created. For example, when Newton was sitting under the tree and he saw the apple fall and he came up with the idea of gravity, he was not thinking about it. That idea just came in his mind at once. That's how intuition works. Ideas come to our mind and those are usually great ideas. They don't come out of a process of thinking, analyzing. That's the intellect. The intellect works in a lower level of the mind. Intuition works in a higher level of the mind. And then the practice of yoga gives us some inner peace and a sense of well-being. And that is deep. It develops through the practice. Now that we have seen some of the benefits, let's see some of the practices that help us to get those benefits. The first and better known practice is the asana. Asana is an, it looks like an exercise, is a posture. There are three basic postures that we are going to go over in this presentation. This asana at first looks like a physical exercise, but it is not really a physical exercise. It is deeper than that. Many of the asanas were developed by human beings observing the behavior of animals, the positions that those animals used to take when they were sick or after eating, observing the behavior of the animals, some sages came with these yoga postures called also asana. The first one we are going to look at is the cobra or the bhujangasana in Sanskrit. Most of the yoga practice is taught with the help of the Sanskrit language. How is this asana? You can see in the figure, the first figure on the left, the person is going up with the help of the arms, but the main strength or the main force is done by the muscles in the back. And as we raise only the front part of the body, as you see on the figure on the right, we breathe in. When we reach the maximum, we hold the breath for eight seconds. Then we breathe out as we come down to the floor. And that is the asana. And we repeat it eight times. So again, with the help of the arms and the hands, we raise the front part of the body, the, the top of the body, just the upper part of the body. We raise it, breathing in, hold it eight seconds, then breathe out. Come down, relax. The relaxation in between the repetitions is important because that's the time the body absorbs the benefits. So we do it eight times, repeating this asana eight times, eight seconds. That's about a minute. And we will pause in between those asanas. So let's put another minute or two for the pause, let's say two plus one, three, 
this exercise will not take more than three or four minutes. If we do it slowly, slowly raising the body, holding the position, slowly lowering the body, all the way down to the floor, relaxing, again repeating it. Let's say a maximum four or five minutes, we could do that, that exercise. After that, we'll do another exercise. The name of this exercise is Dirga Pranam, or Long Salutation. As you see, in this exercise, we are bending forward. The previous exercise, we were bending to the back. This one, we are going to the front. They balance each other. Now, while in the other exercise, as we raise the body, we breathe in. In this one, as we lower the body, we breathe out. You can see in the next picture, you are raising and then you are going down. As you go down, breathe out slowly. In yoga exercises, we always breathe through the nose. So we are going down slowly, touching the floor, remain there for eight seconds. This time we are remaining with our lungs empty because we breathe out all the air. Hold it for eight seconds. Then we breathe in again and we raise again the body and relax in between the two poses. Then we again repeat it and we are going to repeat it eight seconds, the same way as the other one. So eight, eight times eight seconds with this one, eight times eight seconds with the previous one. This exercise may take another four minutes, let's say, maximum five. So if we took five minutes in the first exercise, five minutes for this one, then we are going to a third exercise. The previous exercise, we were kneeling. We were standing on our knees. This one, we are sitting with the legs crossed. And we are also going forward. We are holding the hands in the back. As you can see, the right hand is holding the left wrist. And we will breathe out and go down, trying to touch the nose to the floor. Then we remain there for eight seconds. Then again, we breathe in and breathe out, relax, then breathe in again, then go down, breathing out, eight seconds, then come back. This exercise is called the Yoga Mudra. And now we have three exercises, the Cobra, the Dirga Pranam, and the Yoga Mudra. And these are the three basic exercises. Maybe this practice can take 15 minutes. We are going to add in a few moments two other things after the practice, and it might extend the whole practice to 20 minutes. If we can do these 20 minutes every day, even twice a day, we'll get a lot of benefit. What are the rules for these exercises? The first thing is that in a yoga exercise, we take a shower or we refresh the body before the exercises. And we should do it on an empty stomach, two or three hours after a meal. We should wear very comfortable clothes. We should be on a mat or on a blanket and not do it in open air. Many times we see 
beautiful photos where people are doing the asanas on the beach or on the mountains. Yes, it's beautiful and everything, but it's not the best because the body, when we are doing these positions, the body is heating up certain parts. And if the wind is coming, it may disturb that balance of the temperature of the body and we may get a cold or other problems and the asana will not give the benefit as it was supposed to be after the asanas there are two things we should do one is a self massage we should massage the body the whole body, starting from the head, then the face, then particularly under the arms where there are some lymph nodes. And always we are doing from the center to the periphery. So we are massaging the whole body from up to down, front and back. We continue with the legs and we end massaging the feet with the tip of our fingers. And after we finish this massage, then we lie down in the position that you see in the figure. It is called Shavasana. And we do a relaxation. And this relaxation could be three minutes, could be a little bit less or a little bit more, depending on how much time we have at our disposal. If we can really, really relax deeply, that will re-energize our whole physical and also mental system. And after we finish this relaxation, we should not touch or drink water until the body comes back to normal, until we feel the body is back to normal, the temperature is back to, more, to normal. And we should also wait before we eat. And that could be like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. In the meantime, we can read a book, some spiritual ideas, feed our mind with some good ideas as we wait. Okay, I want to ask you a question now. And this question is, do you practice yoga? So 100% of you participating on this webinar, you already practice it, but sometimes, not regularly. The thing is that Yes, sometimes it's good, but regularity is important. Imagine, or just let, let's compare with the physical things that we do. If we want to maintain our body, we need to eat. And we eat every day at certain intervals and our body needs that nutrition. And that goes into a cycle of 24 hours. So in 24 hours, we are going to sleep, we are going to eat, and we are going to do so many other activities. So it is very important to include the practice in this cycle of 24 hours. Did you ever hear somebody say, oh, during the week, I don't have time, so I eat only on the weekends. Nobody says that. People always find the time. When there is a priority, we find the time. We can be super busy, we will find the time. Or nobody will tell you, oh, I didn't sleep the whole week because I was working hard and I sleep on the weekends. It doesn't work. The health will deteriorate. We sleep every day. We eat every day. We do yoga every day. That's the idea. Another practice of yoga, which is very important 
is meditation. In fact, meditation is the most important practice. And it is also a daily practice. Most people, when they think about the word yoga, they think the yoga exercises. When they think about meditation, they think it's something else. But it's not. It's an integral system. The whole system is called yoga. And that system has the exercises, which are the asanas. It has the meditation. And it has so many other practices. So it's a very integral system. And meditation, let's say, is the central point. Why? Because human beings are mostly mental. Animals are more physical. But humans, we are more mental. We use the mind much more than the body. Animals are satisfied with food, sleep, and then they time to reproduce, or they have fear, and they live according to those basic instincts. But we human beings, we invent so many things with our mind, and we need to entertain our mind all the time. So our existence is much more mental than physical. And Yoga is made for the human being. What's the minimum necessary qualification to practice yoga? It is to have a human body. So it is made for human beings. It works from the mind, balance, balances the body also, but the main thing is the mind. So how to meditate? If we just close our eyes and remain there, the mind will continue working. Even we'll continue listening to the sounds outside. We'll continue distracted. We need a, a method. We need a technique. A technique that will help us to concentrate the mind. So now, let's meditate. Let's try a simple meditation. Let me introduce you to the, what we are going to do now. The first thing is we should sit a little bit with the back straight. If we can sit crossed leg, as you can see in the, fi in the, in the picture, that is a lotus position. If we can sit in the lotus position, that's the best position. But many people cannot. So it is not absolutely necessary. You can sit in a position that is good for you, that you can maintain for a certain time without getting pain, without feeling disturbed. So let's say you are sitting in a cross leg position. It is better to sit on the floor because you are more stable. But some people also sit on a chair because they are not used to sit on the floor and they cannot sit on the floor. So the main point here is to sit in a position that is comfortable, that you can keep your back straight and that you can remain for some time. After that, we will be, even if we close our eyes, we'll be aware of the environment around us. So let's just, for a moment, we feel that environment around us. There may be furniture, the computer in front of us, and so many other things around us. So we kind of feel that environment for a certain time. But then we want to remove ourselves from that environment. So what we can do is we can just think that we are in space. And what we are sitting on is not the floor of the room, but we are sitting on the planet. We are just sitting on the planet. The planet is beneath us. And around we see stars and galaxies. 
if we can remove ourselves from the environment where we are and think that we are actually sitting on the planet in this vast space, that will help our mind to calm down. We'll, it will help us to get the peaceful feeling of space, the peaceful feeling of looking at the stars. So that is a simple visualization that we can do in the beginning of the meditation. After that, our mind needs to be concentrated. Thoughts will be moving around. So we need something to concentrate the mind on to help to keep the mind in one thought and not to let the mind go everywhere. The instrument that we use is what we call mantra. The mantra not only helps the mind to concentrate, but it also helps the mind to expand. Usually the meaning of the mantra is something infinite, something that is not limited, something also that awakens in us deep feelings, feeling of love, feeling of greatness. So the mantra connects the limited to the unlimited, the finite to the infinite. Today, we are going to make an experiment with a type of mantra that we call universal mantra. Universal mantras, we can sing, we can just listen to it, we can repeat it in our mind. It is one type of mantra. Another type of mantra is a personal mantra. Personal mantras are usually only two syllables. One when you breathe in, one when you breathe out. Universal mantras have more, more syllables. So the universal mantra that we are going to use today is Baba Nam Kevalam. This mantra, the meaning of this mantra is something like Everything is that infinite, loving consciousness. So the idea of infinite, the idea of love, and the idea that it covers everything. That's what the mantra brings to our mind. So when we think the mantra, Baba Nam Kivalam, we Make an effort to keep the idea that we are surrounded by this infinite and there is love all around us and that it's not something physical. It is only consciousness. Let's make an experiment. I have an instrument here, a musical instrument. I'm going to sing the mantra. There are limitations for the sound of this webinar system, but let's make the effort. I will sing it. You can also sing it there. And then I will pause. We'll remain in silence for a few moments. And then I sing a little bit more. We may repeat it twice. So let, let's make this experiment. So I'm going to sing the mantra Babanam Kivalam. And we'll keep the position of meditation, the eyes closed. Sing with me. When I stop singing, you continue mentally, only in your mind. And if other thoughts come in your mind, try to keep only the mantra going. If you forget the melody, it doesn't matter. You just say the mantra, just say it just like 
Baba Nam Ki Balam. If you remember the same melody we are singing, you are invited to continue singing it mentally. Let's try it. Close your eyes. We are going to sing the mantra Baba Nam Kevalam. Remain in silence for a few moments. Remain in silence a little bit longer. OK. 
okay we can open our eyes now you ask you a question how do you feel okay i'm waiting a little bit for more people to vote share the results well it's good we're feeling much more peaceful and that was a very short meditation we just did for a few moments so i'm sure with regular meditation we'll be able to feel much more peaceful regularly now a little bit more theory to conclude when we are doing yoga we are working on our subtle body and on our physical body on the physical body the main aspect is the endocrine system the glands the hormones they have a very deep effect on our mind on our emotions and on the subtle level we are working on the chakras the system of chakras where there are seven main chakras and these chakras correspond in the physical body with the glands so it's a very integrated system that we are working to balance the subtle part of our being and also the more physical part of our being how to maintain this inner harmony practice there is no other secret we have to practice daily whatever we learn the techniques that, that we learn we should apply them and as we apply them we get the result so yoga is not something theoretical it is a practice if you want peace of mind spiritual elevation you have to do something to attain it and as a closing quote piece of um, wisdom from yoga in sanskrit trinadapi sunichana tarori va sahishnuna amani nang manadeyam kirtaniya sadahari and that means let us be humble as a blade of grass you know grass everybody steps on it it doesn't complain so if we are humble in our life it will be beneficial if we are tolerant tolerant as a tree the tree will withstand so much and it tolerates the next let us give respect to those people that nobody respects those who are less privileged in our society which are poor old let's give our respect to them and let's do kirtan use the mantra meditate sing the mantra that will bring harmony and meditation is a transformation from physical to mental and mental to spiritual it's a continuous process now a summary what did we talk about today we talked about the effects of yoga on the body how it balances the body we talked about the effects of yoga on the mind how it makes the mind peaceful we talked about the three basic yoga asanas or exercises we talked about the rules that we observe before we started practicing and after 
the not to touch water after if you want to take a shower you take it before we talked about our physical and subtle bodies and how both are balanced through the practice of yoga and we talked about how to maintain that harmony by practicing it regularly now if you have any questions you can type them and i will i can read them here and reply okay the first question is what is the best time to practice asanas well both the asanas and also the meditation it is good that we practice in the morning as the first thing suppose we wake up we can take a shower or we can refresh our body refresh the eyes ears hands feet genital area so keep make the body fresh the best is to take a shower and after that we can do some meditation let's say if we are just in the beginning we can do 10 minutes or 15 minutes with the mantra in the way we did today and after that we can do the yoga exercises so all that will be done before breakfast so when we finish the yoga exercises we should not take the breakfast immediately we should wait some time so that time we can read or do something else if we don't have much time in the morning then we can do the yoga exercise first and then do the meditation because the meditation we don't have to wait to eat we can eat immediately after meditation but we cannot eat immediately after the yoga exercises okay uh, there is a question why to do meditation before asanas it is better to do the subtle part before so what is the subtle part the meditation meditation is more subtle just think we are coming out from deep sleep our mind is very subtle we use that moment for meditation when we start doing the exercises the mind will connect more with the body and if we do the meditation afterwards we are losing that subtleness but if we have this problem of time that we don't have time to wait after the asanas until we eat and then go to work or something else then we can do the asanas before then the meditation then immediately we can eat and we can go and and do our work or study whatever we have to do but if we have time at our disposal and we can control the time then it's better to do the meditation first then the asanas and then other things okay there is another question how long should we do the meditation it depends it depends if we are experienced meditators it's good to give at least a half an hour but sometimes we are just in the beginning and uh, we don't have much time then at least do let's say five minutes or ten minutes nobody can say i don't have five minutes or i don't have ten minutes to do some meditation in the morning let's say i wake up refresh myself or if i'm going to take a shower or something then i just sit down and from for 10 minutes or 5 minutes i repeat the mantra and make an effort to feel this infinite around me this consciousness around me this love around me 5 minutes and then go and do other activities go to work or do whatever you have to do 
that will already make a big difference in life. If we can do more, it's better. But at least something every day, a little bit every day. If some days we have more time and we can do more, but the days that we have less time, at least we do a little bit, a minimum. Okay, there is another question about the three asanas. There, okay, yes, there, there are many asanas. There are so many asanas. I gave those three because they can be a complete practice. They don't have any counter indication. You know, some asanas are good for one person but it's not good for another person. It's a very personalized practice. So those three asanas are kind of basic and anybody can do it. Of course, if somebody has some physical problem, the best way is to talk to a teacher, to a qualified teacher, and the teacher can tell which asanas to do, which asanas not to do. I'm giving these asanas on this webinar. It is for people who don't have any health problem. If anybody has a health problem, it needs a more personalized approach, needs to know what is the problem and which asana to prescribe. Asanas, sometimes people go to a studio and do so many asanas, everybody doing the same, but the idea is that we should do certain asanas that are good for us. Not all asanas are good for everybody. Some asana may be increase the blood pressure and somebody has high blood pressure, so that's not good. Some asana will reduce the blood pressure and somebody has a low blood pressure, so that's also not good. So we have to know which one for our particular type of body. Thank you very much for participating. We do have various programs where somebody can have a deeper experience with yoga. We have retreats and uh, there are many webinars being organized you can go to our website pathofbliss.com slash webinars and you will know about future webinars thank you very much summer bliss is our next retreat you are all invited and good night